Okay, let's try to be a bit Germanic also in terms of our time management. We are back also uh, back with the webcast and um, maybe people can uh, take a seat now uh, so we, uh, you know, you don't miss out on the uh, demos in particular that we want to have uh, show you later. Um, and as I said, the um, uh, famous Spülbohr machine, uh, that is um, the privilege of uh, those who have made the way to Bonn uh, uh, to later, uh, later to see. So welcome back everyone. Uh, now we're moving on to uh, T-Systems. Um, I think it's fair to call it uh, our problem child. Okay? Now it used to be problem children. Okay, now we have a problem child. So it's, um, and, and you know, I think we, we can uh, 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 get that child into a good place too. And uh, because we have Adele. Adele um, uh, does not sing, uh, or he, maybe he does, but he hasn't displayed his uh, skills yet to us, but he rocks. So um, Adele, he's, he's got a plan, right? Adele, welcome you on stage. Thank you. Thank you, Hannes, thank you. I've been called a lot worse than uh, problem child before. And for those who were anticipating Adele to show up and sing, I apologize. Obviously, I'm not as good looking and certainly can't sing. <laughs> because if I start singing, I think I won't survive here. But anyway, with all seriousness, um, we do have a business that needs quite a bit of transformation. Um, and uh, I know many of you in the audience uh, are thinking, look, we've heard this story before, we've seen different plans, uh, there is skepticism about why do we have even a business like T-Systems, uh, and I think that's all justified, to be honest with you. I do believe that this is a business that promised and under-delivered, uh, and it needs to change. So if you give me some benefit of the doubt for the next 40 minutes, to explain to you why we believe this time it will be different. But more importantly, I think I will attempt to explain to you what is T-Systems all about, because it's not one thing. And very few actually understand what do we actually have underneath the covers. Uh, so we'll be very open, transparent, and show you exactly what are we gonna do about this business. So first of all, we are in the process of transformation. We are a business that has struggled for multiple years, uh, struggled in terms of top-line growth, struggled in terms of delivering on our commitments, uh, struggled in terms of generating free cash flow, um, and when I show you the results compared to last uh, capital markets, that you'll see that we fell short uh, on many promises that we made. However, it is important to highlight that through that period, there are some highlights, important highlights. They're important for the future. And they are, we've invested, uh, invested heavily in growth areas, which I will share with you in detail uh, and why we think they're important, uh, including all IP. And also, we've addressed some of the risks in the business even before I show up here, especially around large problematic contracts, which has been a, a heavy, heavy burden that the business had to deal with over the last three years. Second, um, we do have a portfolio that's not one thing. Uh, and I will get into that in a lot more detail. We have things that are very close to Deutsche Telekom core, telecommunication solutions. We have new growth areas that do have connections to Deutsche Telekom because of the network affinity in these solutions. And then we have IT systems or solutions that are not as close to the core of Deutsche Telekom. We have that portfolio. Now, you may ask me the question, why do you have it? I, I, I can't answer a lot of questions. The fact is we have it and we have a plan to transform it. Third point is, what I'm gonna to try to convince you is the core of our strategy going forward is around transforming that portfolio from the areas that are struggling today that had negative contribution to our value to things that are new, as well as protecting our core, which is the telecommunications core. Now to achieve that, we have launched an ambitious transformation plan, and I am confident when you go through the transformation plan, you'll understand it is different from what we had before. We have four initiatives that are critical to address the business challenges. And then finally, we are committing to a financial plan that will get this business back to growth, 
uh, in the second half of 2019, we'll see top line growth. And by the end of 2020, we see positive cash contribution from this business. That is our outlook for now. So let's start first reflecting what did we do in the planning period that just fell behind us. And what I've done is whoever has the books from the prior capital markets day, I pulled out one chart, which was trying to summarize the strategy or the master plan, as we called it before. Right, and this basically said we have segments of the business that we need to address because they're bleeding. We have new areas we got to go grow, um, and we have to address some of the investments that we haven't been doing. And you know, I'll be extremely honest with you. When I go through my story, it is not very different at the top level. It's going to be different how we execute the plan, right? Because the plan wasn't wrong. What happened though is we didn't execute as well as we should have in order to achieve the plan. But there are things that we did achieve. So for example, we stopped significant number of contracts that were contributing negative cash flow to the business. We addressed three very large contracts that were damaging the business and basically masking all of the good things that you could have. We had a run rate of about 100 million losses in selecting a handful of contracts over the last three years, per year. We've invested heavily in growth. So we addressed some really important points that if we were still in the middle of it today, I tell you it would be a lot harder to be able to stand here and be confident in the direction of the business. But there are things, obvious things, we could have done better. First of all, execution of the transformation plan especially around costs. I do not believe we address the fundamentals of the cost of the business, the challenges that we have. And we are in a different business in multiple segments that requires us to be agile, fast, uh, have operational excellence that delivers 5 to 10% improvement every year. And we haven't done that. When you look at how we manage the business, um, our approach to what we sell and what is the strategy around our portfolio was weak. And finally, when you look at our organization structure, and you've heard Dirk kind of talk about this, it is old style legacy kind of structure that actually prevents us from executing the plans that we have. So that's an honest assessment of what can we say we did okay and what are the things that we actually should have absolutely done better. If you look at our scorecard, it's not a good story. Uh, however, I do want to highlight one thing that's important, which I believe is one of our USPs, and that is our customer satisfaction, or Triumph. We scored 88% in last year. And one of the things that I was uh, going through when I decided to come to T-Systems is to understand, look, what are the strengths of this business? And obviously, you have to look at what do your customers think of you? And if you look at our Triumph score of 88% compared to competition, we are in best of class. And yes, you can go and ask our clients, and I'll tell you that majority of our clients would tell you we absolutely value the, value the quality and consistency of T-Systems delivery. Financially, we did not hit the numbers that we committed. Our revenue was minus 1.5%, our EBIT margin was 1.7%, and our cash contribution was not where it needs to be. So we'd like to forget that as quick as possible and move forward to understand where we're going to take this business. So let me walk you through, first of all, the business challenges that I believe, in simple words, we need to address. Right? I'm not going to make it very complicated because the problems are typically not complicated. So first of all, we have a revenue problem. And the revenue problem is both the mix of portfolio that we have, where we had fairly uh, large declines in our IT business, classical IT. And I'll show you what classical IT means in a few slides. We had stable performance in our TC business, uh, which is our core networking solutions to our enterprise clients. And our growth areas are growing double digit. And the problem was that we could not 
uh, make up the decline of IT in the new areas. And therefore, the business was declining minus 1%. In addition to that, our sales organization setup was not the way it should be set up. It was highly fragmented across what we call divisions, and therefore was very focused on very my, uh, specific solution rather than thinking about the broader T systems, lacking the tools and the agility that the sales organization needs. Second, the loss-making contracts. We've talked about that. Look, and I've been in the IT business for many, many years. And losing contracts, no matter whoever tells you that it's not a normal thing, it's actually a very normal thing. The problem for us in T-Systems was the magnitude of these losses and the length of that magnitude. Three years of 100 million plus is not normal. And we believe that is behind us. The reason we believe that's behind us is because we've implemented a very robust risk management that gets involved very early in evaluating the deals and stay with the deals all the way through the early implementations, which is really where you lose money. When you get to stable, ongoing delivery in a 10-year contract in third year, it, you typically get the contracts to a stable position. Some vary in how much you make, but you get them stable. It's that early period that you need to be very worried about. And finally, um, and, and I don't think we've been talking very openly about that before, our cost structure needs to be addressed, especially when it comes to overheads. We have too many layers, we have too many managers, we have too many executives, which makes the organization extremely complex, not only slows you down, but creates uh, an SGNA structure that's just not affordable and not what we need to be. So those are our challenges. These are the three challenges that we need to address. But I also want to very quickly go through what are the foundations that we strongly believe in in T-Systems. First of all, marquee clients. We serve every DOX30 customer in Germany. Every single one. We serve 100 of the Fortune 500 customers globally. And we're not only, I'm not just saying we got a little project going on with these clients. I'm talking about mission critical applications that if we don't deliver, the clients can't run their business. Our top clients have renewed our relationship with us way beyond 10 years. These are important assets to have. Our network, both from an asset point of view, skills, network management skills, is an asset for T-Systems. Our breadth of portfolio gives us an ability to cross-sell and upsell clients that not a lot of our competitors have. Our skills and expertise, you know, the German engineering that we could keep talking about, and I, again, from experience, is pretty impressive. When you look at what we do, what kind of problems do we solve, and how deep do we go, and then the investment in the growth areas and the committed employees that we have are also assets. Now, when I joined here, um, I started reaching out to the employees and created a little bit more of an engagement program to get people engaged much more into the transformation journey. I now have had more than 200,000 touches from the employees coming back wanting to be engaged in the journey that we're going to in T-Systems. And that, that is absolutely an asset to be able to leverage. So challenges and platforms to build on. So what are we doing? So first of all, before I get into our new strategy, our new plan, I want to give you a real open description, what is T-Systems? What exactly do we do? So if you just bear with me for a few minutes, hopefully this would be very helpful for you as you think about T-Systems valuation and why do we have some of these things. So first of all, a third of our business is what we call TC Core. This is telecommunication services, this is enterprise networks, VPNs, managed services around the enterprise, UCC. Um, this is really core to Deutsche Telekom. And we focus here on German clients and German outbound clients. So we're very selective on where we go and how do we penetrate the market opportunity. Then moving to your right, is the next business, which is what we call classified as ICT. This is the business that we do with 
certainly German government, federal and state and local, as well as some of the European entities. Most of this business is network. And I'll show you the numbers of each one in a few slides. So it's also very close to, um, to what Deutsche Telekom is all about. Obviously, we've invested heavily in IoT. IoT always starts with connectivity and managing devices. That is very close to Deutsche Telekom core and what we need to do. But we've also built an integrated IoT stack that we can deliver to our business clients to accelerate their digitization. And I'll show you a breakout of IoT and how big it is and why we think we can be a player in that space. Also, not too far from Deutsche Telekom's core. Security. We've created the security business, um, what, about two years ago. Um, we have 1,400 experts that deal with 6 million attacks on Deutsche Telekom's infrastructures per day. Per day. We are now the leader in Germany when it comes to security. Because we put this team together and started selling those capabilities to our clients. Our ambition is to actually be a leader in Europe. This is highly demanded area where people are struggling, especially as they ex expand the number of connected devices, expand the partnership networks, and open up their businesses to new models. Then we have road charging. And I, I think many of you know road charging because we had this uh, road charging legal arbitration that we've been uh, working through that we have now good news that's now put behind us. But we are one of the leaders in road charging in Europe. It's a business that generates double-digit EBIT margin. We're obviously the leader in Germany with the truck tolling. We're leader in Belgium. We are one of the providers for EATS, the European uh, tolling system. Um, and we're seeing quite a bit of demand because a lot of national uh, initiatives are ramping up in terms of putting tolling in the roads in different European countries. So it's not that greatly connected to what our core is, but it is a business that's done very well for us, growing double digit on the top line as well. As we get to the right, we get more IT. So digital solution is a newly created area where we put 4,800 consultants that do different things around digitization. And they offer services for front-end digitization of clients, back-end, new business models, robotics, uh, changing business models. And I'll show you some examples of what we do here where we believe is a huge opportunity in the marketplace. Public cloud and public cloud managed services is an area that you probably think of just having the OTC, the open telecom client. That's our alternative for the hyperscalers for Germany based on open telecom cloud. But in addition to that offering, we have been building what we call a multi-cloud managed services where clients who are going into AWS, who are going into Azure, who have private clouds in their infrastructure are beginning to struggle on how to actually optimize and how to manage those networks going forward. It's a big business. We've seen a lot of wins, especially over the last six months that accelerated our investment in this area. SAP, you may wonder why do you think it's a growth area, and I'll explain it later. It's a big business for us. We are the leader in Germany in SAP, both infrastructure and application management, and there is a dynamic in the marketplace that I'll explain a little bit later that drives the growth of that capability. And then finally, uh, the area that we struggle with the most, of had the biggest difficulties, is what we call classical IT. And in classical IT, we have two things. We have what we call managed infrastructure services. Think of it as hosting, private clouds, application management. And we have classical or dedicated system integration work. So this is legacy applications that big clients have that continue to need to be upgraded, continue to be managed. But it's a business that has very little growth potential going forward. That is the area, the classical IT, where we had the big losing contracts, and that's the area which has been driving the decline of the overall T system. So, as I said before, 
T-Systems is not one thing. Right? It is a combination of these assets. And what I've presented to you just now is actually the new way of us looking at this business. It's not the way we looked at this business in the past. And I'll explain more why, why we've done it this way. Okay, now, when it comes to strategy, so first of all, as I said, we are a business under construction. And we have three key areas that we need to address. Remember, revenue, obviously the lo losing contracts and cost. And we, to address those, we launched an ambitious transformation plan. The first area around portfolio is focused on why do we have the products that we have and where do we make money? So that portfolio initiative is focused on that, rationalizing, making sure that we're investing in the right areas as we go forward. The second area is how do we get our revenue back to growth? How do we get our sales organization to deliver six billion of signings every year? Because anything below six billion is not gonna allow us to grow. That's what that initiative is focused on. The third initiative around delivery integration is to understand what is our end-to-end -end cost of delivery and how do I drive it down? Because today, it's not acceptable. We need to do better. And the last one around cost, overhead cost. So let me walk you through each one in a little bit more detail. So the first one I already introduced to you, which is changing the way we think about this business. And this team is, it is the largest change we're driving into T-Systems. It's changing uh, how we actually manage, track, and invest in this company going forward. Where in the past, we were looking at divisions that was more or less a combination of client groups, now into what really is the offering. Why are we in this over? And we actually, for the last six months, and to be honest, it's been going on much more than six months because even I show, before I show up, people were thinking about how do we get into a better understanding of where we make money and where we not make money. But over the last six months, we've rationalized the portfolio that we have through four lenses. We looked at the market opportunity of every offering that we have. We asked the question, can we compete? Do we have the capabilities to compete? And if we don't have the capabilities, can you build them? Can you build them versus the competition that you're dealing with? Um, do we have the right to play? Will people give us a chance? And, and finally, most important is, okay, that's all good, but can we make money? And through that lens, we have rationalized already multiple things that we're going to stop doing and things that we said we're going to invest even faster, and I'll show you in a second. Based on that, we have a clear strategy. We have a clear strategy around the company on how we want to transition, how we want to drive this company. We are restructuring as we speak into these portfolio units, and we have already deployed a new management system that manages the company in a different way versus what we've done in the past. And then you've seen the portfolio already, but let me give you some numbers. So if you think about the numbers first, our TC core, our growth areas, and our classical IT, it's about a third, a third, a third. So the core, IT, the core business is about 2.2 billion, our growth area is about 2.1, and our classical IT is about 2.5 billion. So the size of our growth areas is becoming relevant. If you look at some of these sizes, the classified business, 400 million. We are the leader in classified business, especially in the networks, in Germany and in some areas in EU. If you look at our digital business, the new business we just created a couple of months ago, it's 400 million. If you look at our SAP business, it's half a billion. You, you can talk to any analyst around the SAP and they'll tell you we are the leader in Germany. And we're number two, number three in Europe. And I'm talking comparing to the big players, not, not Picking, you know, compares to IBM, to Atos, to DXC. So some of these businesses have real good scale. And if you look at the performance, historical performance, you'll see that TC has been stable. Growth areas, by nature, we're coming from low bases are growing high double digit. And IT is the one that's been declining minus one, minus two percent, um, which is what, what hurt us. And if you think about the future, 
Uh, we don't believe the dynamics change. The only thing that's different here is we do believe there is an opportunity in SAP, and I'll show you an SAP breakout in a second, why we think that's the case. So we have a portfolio. We're not one thing. We have to protect the core. Some of our growth areas already have scale. Others don't. And if you ask me, are you going to be successful in every single one of these things? I'll tell you very quickly, no. But if we're successful 60, 70% of these, it will be fine. You don't ever hit 100% of everything you try. And in the IT business, we've already decided. For example, we decided we're not doing end user services anymore. That was a 400 million per year business. When I first showed up here in January, we were supposed to bid for a very large deal, multi-billion euro deal, several years, end user services. We said, no way, we're going to start today by saying we're not going to go into businesses that don't generate value for this business. We're looking at also other areas in the IT business to make sure that we get out of them or create a partnership somewhere where we are not the ones to make it profitable in the future. So that is the first thing that we've done, right? A change, a fundamental change in how we think about the business and how we manage the business going forward. And let me take you through a few examples. So Internet of Things, because I said there's a few areas that are close to us as a core, as Deutsche Telekom, and others are not. So Internet of Things. This is a multi-billion euro business. Everybody's talking about it. Uh, but for us, obviously, it starts with connectivity. Connecting the devices. But not only connecting the devices, we have IP and how to actually manage these devices. How do you turn them on? Turn them on. How do you turn them off? How do you measure them? Can you track them? You know, can, you, can you enable them? Can you disable them? Can you connect them? Can you uh, integrate them into different... That's the start. That's the foundation. That's very important to us as Deutsche Telekom. On top of that, we've built an application layer and we've built development layer and a data hub to be able to do the data analytics. Now, we're not talking about creating and developing applications. We're talking about having the environment that we can install in our B2B clients that can convert their applications into IoT uh, business models and drive that growth for them. It's a defined approach rather than highly customized and highly uh, fragmented approach going forward. You've seen uh, we've announced a partnership with Microsoft. So part of our solution in the IoT is based on the Azure platform. So on top of the connectivity of the Azure platform. But we also have a version of the solution that's based on Cumulosity, which is a less complex, more simplified model that we can sell to smaller clients. Um, one of the customer examples here, and I can't share the name, is a company that deals with um, uh, office and commercial real estate restoration from water damage and fire damage. And they have 20,000 dryers that are out in the marketplace that they bring to the apartments, they bring to the commercial sites in order to dry the premises from water damage. 20,000. Their issues being power consumption and leaving these devices, dryer devices, much longer than what they need to or sometimes showing up with maintenance crews to remove them much earlier than what they're ready. We've equipped all of these devices with sensors that connect the devices from a maintenance point of view, but also measure the humidity, the temperature of the environments that we're in. We're able to reduce their power consumption by over 25%. And the efficiencies that we put together for them in their operations was significant. This is just an example of how we deploy our IoT platform with connectivity, with measurement devices, connected to their applications in order to bring them business value. And we have a few other examples that you see. The second is security. And I've already talked about security. I mean, this is, this is big business for us. We believe um, we are very well positioned because of our expertise on what we've been doing to protect Deutsche Telekom. As I said before, we deal with 6 million attacks per day. We have experts that put together different solutions with partners that look at the network, look at level one, level two. They look into your IT infrastructures. They're able to monitor. They're able to analyze the attacks, and they're able to remediate 
the security attacks that our customers deal with. Uh, if you haven't seen our security operations centers, our, our SOC, in Bonn, which is one of the largest in Germany, I encourage you to go see it because it's like Star Wars. Right? You, you know, you got all kind of monitoring about all of the traffic in the world in different attacks that we're dealing with and our clients dealing with. And here, our customers don't like us to disclose they're working with us, obviously for obvious reasons, but Linda Group, which is open to that, is totally outsourced their security to us. So they run in our SOC, we have level one, level two security, we we'll look at their networks, we we'll look at their IT infrastructures, we're the one responsible to make sure they're up to date and, and remediate any attacks that they have uh, penetrating their environments. Next one is digital solutions. Again, a multi-billion business, everybody's talking about digitization, but everybody lacks resources to be able to do it. This is a business that's already 400 million euros for us growing double digit. And if I show you, uh, and I'll, I'll come back to examples about the scale I'm talking about, this is 4,800 consultants. And they're not one thing, they're broken into front end digitization work, they're broken into back end, they're doing robotics for our clients, they're developing strategies on how to enable them to get into the digitization roadmap. It is a business that we feel very confident with, especially in Germany. Our ambitions here is Germany. And it's not only used for large enterprise clients, this is the same team that supports our German middle stand uh, in their digitiz digitization journey because that is where the skill is actually even harder to get. SAP, look, SAP, as I said before, half a billion business. The market for us has been, us, we've been flat in the past, but SAP has a major push to go to s hana And they are driving that conversion. And we're going to ride on the back of that. You've seen multiple times announcements. We're very, very close with SAP. I have personal relationships with multiple board members. There's huge commitments on both sides because we have the skills. We have the reach in the marketplace, not just in Germany, but in the select countries that we are, to be able to help them with this transformation. And one of our leading truck manufacturers in Germany selected T-Systems to actually take them to that s 4 HANA journey. And this tells you who we are when it comes to that kind of space. So that is the portfolio. We, we, not, I'm not going to talk about that because that's just demonstrates the SAP numbers. But that was the portfolio. Now, how do we fix sales? So the first thing we did, we integrated our go-to-market uh, from a divisional structure to, into one team. We believe it's really important to have one team uh, divided into segments. So we have a team that focuses on Germany end-to-end. -end. We have a team that focuses on public sector end-to-end. -end. We have a very strong team that goes after automotive. We have a team that covers international markets, but they all one organization. Lessons learned, tools, etc., to be able to drive the efficiency. And our goal for that team is to sell the entire portfolio. Now, that team is supported by sales specialists from each of the portfolio. So we've got a team that covers the relationships, that finds new clients, that brings in the specialists that can go very deep in each of the area that's required, depending on the customer situation. Obviously, what we need to do is get our signings back to six billion. We had a really difficult few years in terms of signings, we need to be at six billion minimum. And, I, and I'll tell you, you know, I've seen already in the first quarter, we're beginning to see early good signs that at, that integrated team can drive a good success in the marketplace. So I am confident that as we enhance the tools, as we change the processes, and for example, one of the simple things we did, um, any deal that was less than 100,000 euros required multiple signatures in the organization that slowed it down dramatically. We gave that authority down to the manager and the seller to be able to do it real time. If it meets certain criteria on margin and it's a standard, you don't need to come to anybody. You can approve it. And the volume of these smaller deals we deal with are thousands. 
What we want to accomplish is increase our face time from about 5% in front of the client today, yep, 5%, to 25% by the end of 2019. The third area that we need to look at is delivery. And it was not clear what is the actual cost of end-to-end -end delivery when I came here. When I asked the question, what, what, tell me exactly what does it cost for me to deliver a server to the client? It wasn't clear because the delivery team was also divided into multiple pieces. There's some delivery with sales. There was some delivery in factories. There's some deliveries in what we call points of production. We didn't have a deliberate strategy of where delivery should come from. So that is an area where we started driving very hard. We integrated the delivery under the portfolio units. We see an opportunity to drive 100 million of savings through standardization and optimization and automation and using the right tools. We also see a significant opportunity in right-shoring deliberately our delivery. We have already declared that we have four strategic delivery centers in the world, four. Yes, we'll have local delivery teams, but they're gonna be more client-specific, closer to the client, but in terms of scale, volume four. Germany, of course, will be in Germany. Hungary, where we already have more than 5,000 people. Slovakia, where we have about 4,000 people. And India, we are gonna build India. Today, we have a couple of hundred people. By end of the year, we'll have 1,000. And our drive is going to be to have enough people in India to give us the good mix of delivery across. We need all of them. It's not one play. But now we have a deliberate strategy. And that also can get us 100 million of savings. And then finally, it's the overheads. And you can't hide from this. That no matter what we do in all the other areas, we have to address the cost of our overheads in the company. And I said in the beginning, um, we've got too many managers, we've got too many layers, too many executives. It slows us down um, because every manager wants to manage, naturally. So our goal is to go from eight layers in the organization to five. We're going to drive a significant reduction in our overheads that's going to deliver over $100 million per year savings. So that is a must for us as we go forward. It's not an option besides the other areas that we talk about. Now, in addition to these streams, in order to drive successful transformation, you have to connect it with a change management process. You can't just stand up and say, I'm gonna change, I want to do this. You gotta take the people and the managers with you. And we launched an ambitious cultural as well as change management process that includes educating our leaders. We selected 200 leaders in the company. We started creating specific education, including workshops when we're together to explain to them how to change. How do we want them to behave? How do you execute the plans? We also picked five business principles where we said these five business principles we must live by. Everybody in the organization. Client at the center of everything we do. IT and, and technology is, is, is a critical component of our transformation. Teamwork and collaboration. Operational excellence. Every year you got to be better. Every year you have to be better. Just, it never stops. And of course our people make it happen. So we've got a lot of engagement with our people through communications and through web, web, web seminars, we'll, with, with, with town hall meetings, etc. So we believe that in order for us to get to the plans that we have laid out, we need that cultural and change management transformation program as we go forward. We also cannot forget the lessons learned from the past. And believe me, we looked at them very carefully. We looked at why did the revenue growth did not do what it did, right? And what are we doing different? Loss making contracts and making sure that the risk management is robust enough to make sure it doesn't repeat. We'll have challenging contracts in the future, no question. But don't let them drift into the neighborhood that we've had for the last three years. Um, too little automation, not enough offshoring. All of these ideas have been built into our transformation plan. And every time we go through a review, every time we go through the initiative, we ask the question, are we using lessons learned? 
Are we really making change? Is it real? Is it tangible? Or is it just we're, we're feeling good about it because we're doing something? Um, so let me try to bring this all together and try to conclude here. So first of all, one thing I'd love for you to remember here is T-Systems is not one thing. And I don't believe it's appropriate for us to look at T-Systems and say it's one ailing thing because we have some exciting things that we're working on. We have core of our business that's been stable for a long period of time. And we have some exciting things in the core too. Tim talked about Angena, software-defined networks and software-defined wide area networks that we're developing. We're very excited about that. All IP migrations, et cetera. Um, we have changed our go-to-market approach and gave our sales leaders and our sellers a lot more excitement and energy to go you know, really be sure of themselves in the marketplace through what we've done in the organization. We have scale. Right? As an organization that's almost 7 billion euros, it gives us the ability to build scale in India, as an example, very quickly. We go from 200 people to 1,000 people in eight months. Right? Spend marketing appropriately, being able to invest in the areas. The scale here matter, as then what we have is a portfolio that is leveraging the strength of the company and allows us to upsell and cross-sell, especially from the businesses that are struggling to the businesses that are growing. For example, our IoT offering, we go to our clients that are very good with us. And we show them, and we're always at the table. We're always at the table. Now, do we win or not? That's a, that's a competitive situation, but we're always there. If we were not there, and you'd be knocking on the door, they wouldn't let you in. So our strategy in a nutshell, and, and yes, you're going to say it's not very different from before, but I want to convince you that how we're going to execute it is different. The strategy is about shifting our portfolio from where we are today, a third, a third, a third, into an overweight and into our growth areas. We do that by protecting our TC core, making sure that that business continues to be strong, transitioning to SD1 areas as they come, transitioning to IP, get it back to growth after those transitions, investing in the growth areas while we're managing our classical IT down. And of course, addressing the cost issues that we talked about. And through this strategy, we are open for bigger structural moves. Now that we know exactly what we have, we know where to invest, we're open for partnerships. We're open for M&As. This is not something that's closed in front of us. But our priority is to make sure we execute the plan that I show in front of you. And we'll be open for the other, like end user sales. I, I, stopping it, we're looking at partners to be able to take the business. That's normal, part of the portfolio management. So, summary of the cost savings, you've, you've seen that. I'm not gonna go through that, right? Delivery uh, has quite big contribution and overheads. And if you look at our financial outlook, what our commitment is, our revenue is going to be slow in terms of growth because we have that dynamic of IT coming down and growth areas trying to catch up. You'll see that our EBITDA growth is 5%, which we have not shown in a long period of time. We have built enough capex and special factors in our plans. Um, we have enough, we believe, both a combination of two cash elements to be able to drive that transformation plan. And what we're trying to deliver, what we will deliver, is a positive cash flow contribution of this business to Deutsche Telekom. And the model in the midterm ambition is 1% revenue growth. It's margin, EBITDA margin, EBITDA growing at 5% every year. EBITDA margin between 8 to 10% and positive contribution. And we're going to retain and maintain that Trium rating above 80%, which is where we've been over the last five years. Um, that's it. <laughs> that's the story. Uh, so I hope uh, you understood the difference between where we were and where we're trying to go. So with that, Anas. Very good.